someone suggested in one of the comments that I feel more outside. So it's a nice sunny day today, so I came outside and today I want to talk about Microsoft Edge, particularly the new Chromium version that came out uh, in beta this week. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so at the end of last year, so that was what, eight months ago, Microsoft announced that it would be bringing out a new version of its Edge web browser, this time built around the Chromium open source project. Now, Chromium, of course, is the basis of the Chrome web browser, and is actually also the basis of some other web browsers, including Opera. Now, the shift over from the proprietary Microsoft uh, rendering engine to this open source one is significant for lots of different reasons and we'll get into that in a moment. But what happened is this week is Microsoft uh, dropped the official beta version of this uh, new browser. It's been available for a while as kind of developer versions but this is the first time it's gone with something that it thinks that normal consumers can use without having to be too technical. So and on top of that it's actually available for Mac OS. So rather than just try it now on Windows, I thought I would try Microsoft Edge on Mac OS. So what I'm going to show you now is really just my initial thoughts and a first look at it. And then after that, we'll come back and we'll talk more about the significance of Microsoft switching over to the Chromium uh, engine. OK, so this is the new Microsoft Edge web browser on Mac OS. This is the version, of course, based on uh, Chromium. So I'm really doing like a first look here. This is the first time I'm seeing these screens as well. So the initial setup here, do we want to start with your data or start from scratch? Well, let's see what happens if we start with your data. Uh, key change required to access and import your saved passwords and payment info from Google Chrome. OK, well, OK, let's carry on, see what happens. OK, need to pop in my password for my Mac here. Uh, and again, okay, choose a new look of the tabs. Okay, inspirational, informal, I say, and that brings up the news below that focused. Okay, well, we'll stay on inspirational because I think that gives you the background, right? Okay, done. Okay, so here we go. Here is a list of all of the, uh, the, this is it. Wow, that was quick. It's imported it all. OK, and if we go down here, then I see we get the news. And this is obviously coming from Microsoft's search engine, all the news that they've got there. OK, and if we close that tab and go to welcome to Microsoft Edge beta channel, get involved. Thanks for joining. This is Microsoft Edge on uh, uh, Mac OS. OK, so what are they telling you? What can you do? OK, so first of all, this is the Chromium. OK, this is a beta. OK, you can get it on Mac OS, which is the first time you'll be able to get something from Microsoft like this for a long time. Get involved. We're listening. OK, collections is ready for the first look. We have to announce the collections so is ready for experimental collections. Allow you more, allow you to collect and compare content you find on the web while shopping, planning, doing research. We'd love for you to try it out uh, and tell us what you think. OK, well, that would be interesting to see how that works. Uh, pro protect yourself from the internet and trackers. We are experimenting with a new way to keep control of your privacy. Tracking uh, prevention is now available in Edge. Uh, this feature protects you from tracking websites that you aren't accessing directly. OK, well, that would be also good. Show 15 more tips. Sync your data with iOS and Android. OK, what else can we do? Report a bug. Okay, you can go, of course, to a Chromium store. We'll look at that in a moment. Browse, let's do that now. Browse extensions. Here you have these kind of official list of things, and there's some famous ones here, you know, Amazon and the ad blocker, Avast. Uh, let's just try one here. Here's this basic arithmetic calculator. We'll install that. Yes, add it as an extension, and that should get added up to our taskbar in a moment. Let's just wait for that to complete. And there it is. Uh, and of course, we click on it. It just gives you this, you know, this little calculator. You can do. So you know what you can do with uh, extensions in general. Interestingly, though, if you go down to extensions here, you can say allow extensions from other stores. So let's activate that and say allow. And now we can go to chrome.google.com slash web store. 
And so here is the uh, Chrome Web Store. And many of these uh, extensions will work uh, by default in the new version of Microsoft Edge. However, not all of them. Microsoft do have some information about that. Some limitations for Chrome Web Store extensions. The Microsoft Insider channel supports the installation of extensions from the Chrome Web Store, what we were just looking at. In most cases, these extensions will work great. However, there are two known issues. If the extension relies on a Google account functionality to sign in or sync data, it may not work properly because you're signing into Microsoft's account for all your syncing and so on when you use the new Edge. And if the extension relies on companion software on the PC, it may not work properly even if the companion software is installed. So obviously there's some differences there about how it can interact with installed uh, programs on your PC. However, these extensions should all work. So let's give it a try. Let's try this Boxall Rebound. And of course, we're going to say add to Chrome, but of course, we're adding to Microsoft Edge. Add box or rebound to Microsoft Edge. Yes, we're going to do that. And let's see whether this works. Remember, we're adding a Chrome extension to Microsoft Edge. Okay, so there we go. That's come up there now. So let's try and play it. Play. Ooh, I've never played this before. Okay, there we go. So the point is here, of course, is that this is a Microsoft, um, this is Microsoft Edge, but we've installed a Chrome extension into there because of course, Microsoft Edge is based on Chrome. So Microsoft moving over to Chromium is kind of a double-edged sword. On the one side, it means that we're kind of getting a more unity nowadays. Way back in the day when you had things like uh, Firefox or even before that, Netscape, and then you had Internet Explorer, and you had then Chrome and the others. Whenever a new feature was added, whether that was something in JavaScript, whether there was something in HTML, whether there was something, a protocol that was supported, it would be in one web browser and then it wouldn't be in another web browser and kind of the real bane of any web developer was having to make sure that websites worked on seven different types of web browsers doing seven different types of things and that could be quite complicated and you couldn't always rely on the feature set that you were getting in one browser in another. Now that uh, Microsoft Edge is moving over to Chromium, that maybe means we're getting an alignment, which means that we can kind of all go on together in one direction as the web develops, and that's good. And from an open source point of view, Microsoft again have committed to contributing heavily to the Chromium project. They've co committed to releasing all of this stuff under open source. So just like Google Chrome and then using Chromium, uh, Microsoft Edge will use Chromium and there's that open source aspect to it and Microsoft are fully behind that. However, there is a negative side and that is that now that there is no competition and that Chromium could now become the default uh, for almost any kind of new technology that gets created. And that's good and bad. As I said, it's good because we can all go on together, but it's also bad because it means that you can have domination, a monopoly by just one company. And that's, in this case, it's Google. So Google could take the net in a certain direction that could favor its view of the way cloud services should work, it could favor its view of the way it thinks the internet should work, and then there is nobody to bring checks and balances to make sure that things are moving uh, in a general consensus rather than a monopoly by one company. Now, some people do mistrust Microsoft's intentions when it comes to open source. Now, here's the question. If they are now contributing to Chromium, is Microsoft going to be big enough to try and kind of dominate the Chromium project and kind of make people dependent again on Microsoft technology? I don't think that's going to happen. I think they they can't come in and overtake such a huge project, even with their own contribution. So I really think that uh, they would know they can't uh, overtake it. They would know they can't make it uh, at their project. So any contributions they are making to this can only be for the general good and can't really advance any kind of sinister Microsoft plot that you might think uh, is going on. So another question is, is will Microsoft be able to add anything to Microsoft Edge that will mean that people will favor it over Chrome or over Firefox or over Opera? What could Microsoft bring to the table that means that people will be prepared to switch from one browser to another? The fact that it will come by default with Windows 10 could give it a boost, but current Microsoft Edge was their 
uh, with Windows 10 and most people just seem to use it so they can install a different browser and that was about it. So it will be interesting to see whether Microsoft can actually gain any market share with this new approach. Of course, performance of the new browser is key. If you feel that it's sluggish or doesn't respond well, then people just aren't going to use it. Now, testing web browser speed can be a tricky business. All I did was I fired up the Angel Risk 5 emulator, which boots a version of Linux uh, on a Risk 5 that's emulated in JavaScript. And actually, it came in at just over six seconds on Microsoft Edge, whereas Chrome on exactly the same PC took over 10 seconds. So that's a significant performance advantage there by Microsoft Edge. Now I'm sure if I was to ask you to talk in the comments below what you think about the uh, Microsoft Edge based on Chromium, the fact you can get it for Windows, the fact you can get it for Mac OS, I'm sure there's going to be lots of interesting comments and I'm sure they're going to be divided into two camps. Yeah, great, no rubbish. So have at it. Tell me what you think of the, uh, the new web browser. Tell me what you think of Microsoft's uh, change of heart abandoning its proprietary Microsoft Edge uh, system and going over to a Chromium-based one to bring you this new version of Microsoft Edge. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do get a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget the new Speedtest G channel. And I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.